Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta. Again, don't really have anything special to say at the beginning, so let's just get right into it. So this is a place where Bayonetta gets all her deja vu from, apparently. So let's see what all that is. John? Cereza? The little one? Tentacles? Why did it have to be tentacles? Well, you are a female in a Japanese game, so it's kind of to be expected. But in any case, we have three joys here to fight, and what I like to do here is... Uh, here's a good strategy I found from someone else on YouTube. Make sure you try and get a witch time, then use Kul Shedra to just beat the hell out of them. Look, I killed two of the three of them by doing that. Uh, I had to try that a few times before I was able to fully get that right. But yeah, I mean, that's a good way of getting rid of them. That's a good mark of what Kolshedra can do. And here I just use, um, yeah, to beat him up with a standard combo and uh, use a torture attack to finish the last one off. Yeah, it could be a bit tricky trying to get the, um, that <laughs> little visual glitch there. <laughs> um, yeah, it could be a little tricky getting the uh, witch time properly at the beginning. And you need to hope that the, uh, joys are all in the right place for you to, you know, they're all within the right radius for you to swing on around and to be hit by your flail, so to speak. But yeah, that's a pretty good quick way that I saw um, another YouTuber who plays a lot of Bayonetta on, um, named uh, Seraphim17. That was his strategy that he used against him in hard mode, so I thought that might work here, and it works brilliantly. Now this next area uh, has an interesting gimmick to it. You ha I left this part in because I was trying to destroy this golem wall, but instead my lock-on was trying to force me to attack the enemies behind me. Because of that, as you might have saw there, I got hit off screen. So that's why I was had to re restart this part. But like when you restart the um, verse from the title screen, it sends you right here. The reason why I am going to be going after the uh, four golem walls here first is because... Uh, Two of the spots will spawn in uh, more enemies, and I want to wait for all of the enemies to, you know, be on screen before I try to fight them. Instead of, you know, just killing three, losing my combo, engaging another two, killing them, losing my combo, then fighting the last two, and yeah, you get, you get the picture. So by doing this, um, all the enemies here are all here on the battlefield, and I'm able to fight all of them at once, rather than having to fight them off piece by piece. Because, once you get down to it, I mean, they're just basic affinities, there's nothing special about them, so if you waste them quickly and you don't have all of them on the field, then you're probably not going to get a very good, like, uh, combo ranking for this section. But, uh, these parts are not entirely it, because after you defeat these two, you're going to have to fight a Grace and Glory, so, uh, that'll be your other chance to build up a combo, you know, like, killing off Grace using his, uh, Fire Claws to kill the Glory, so... And as you might have noticed, um, we are once again in assets that are being reused. Like, this is another plaza from Vigrid from the earliest chapters that I am now currently fighting in. 
And uh, that's how the rest of this chapter is going to be as well. It's the last chapter to really do that seriously. But yeah, two chapters in a row of this was kind of not really my thing. So yeah, I finally got Witch Time up against the Grace. And I just beat the hell, of out, hell out of him. Uh, pretty standard. You like you guys know what I do against these guys by this point, so. But yeah, um, this will be the last chapter where it like it seriously reuses assets and makes places like this, and we find at least got a bit of a bit of storyline at the very beginning. So apparently, the girl, little girl named Cereza and Jean used to be I don't know friends who used to card themselves onto a doll back during the witch hunt times. So we'll see what that entails in a few later chapters up here on this ridge were um if you remember like several chapters ago is where an alfheim used to be is now a witch chest and inside it's an item that i have not bought or encountered yet that is a red hot shot uh, devil may cry players will know a similar item called gold orbs uh this like upon dying it'll just automatically restore like say three quarters of one life bar so it'll protect you from dying but it'll count it'll still count as a death on your um end of chapter ranking and it'll count as using an item so uh like once you have it it's permanently equipped just as long as you don't die it'll never activate so it'll never penalize you at the end uh once the four cogs are in there use a stripper pole to rotate clockwise to go to this little platform over here that's uh to the right because at this platform is going to be a witch chest and our first Alfheim. The Alfheims of this uh, chapter are pretty easy in my opinion. The first one is a little tedious, but it's not too bad. Like, and with that, uh, we are pretty close to maxing out our magic meter, actually. Like, I even did, like, uh, the two Alfheims in this chapter, like, both in one take, so I was surprised at that. Yeah, this is another Wicked Weave Alfheim, but since now we have, like, you know... By this point, you should be um, better with Shiraba and um, dodge offsets. And pretty much everyone's a strategy for um, this all five is the same. Just use the punch kick punch combo with Shiraba, since its wicked weaves are strongest. And look at that, that's pretty much your, what you're going to be seeing me doing throughout this entire verse at this all five. Just remember that when you're in a wicked weave only uh, all five like this, if even a one like standard attack hits one of the enemies you will bounce off of it it'll be just like you know they deflect your attacks so no matter what it is they can stagger you by doing that in this alfheim and they could leave you open to counter attacks so that's what you have to be wary of i was surprised that that one attack didn't hit that applaud there with the bow like if uh, you want to be mix it up a little bit you could use things like the punch punch kick 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 combo but this one is just quicker a bit more efficient and more damaging, so there's really no reason to use it. And because it's a Wicked Weave only, all fine like this, your combo uh, rating to get Platinum for this is very low, because it's not like you can maintain a truly high combo all that easily. Another thing that uh, Wicked Weave only all fine should teach you is how to effectively learn Tetsanko and Heal Stomps. Like, for a while I used to not do it. It used to be pretty hard for me to pull off a Ted Zonko or Heal Stomp, which is, you know, press uh, back to forward in any direction, and then pressing either punch or kick. I often uh, found myself screwing that up, so all finds like this are really good places for you to, like, get some practice with that. Because you can only damage enemies with Wicked Weaves here. So those are Ted Zonkos. They take, um, you know, uh, two magic orbs to do. Same thing with Heal Stomps. If you use either the, um... Witch Twist and Umbered Portal Kick, they do the same things, they require two. And that means I got a, a pure Platinum on that chapter. She will only say Junin Hayaideo if you kill the last enemy in a verse with a Tetsanko, and you got a pure Platinum. So yeah, at least on normal difficulty, those um, all fives are pretty simple. It's not really anything to worry about, just as long as you're able to do um, the basic dodge offsetting pretty easily. But now making our way back to the main plaza of this little um, reuse section again. 
Just want to show off that there is nothing else that you can get around here. A few breakable pots maybe, but that's all the collectibles you can get in this area. And now we're going to rotate the top of this platform to 180 degrees away from the platform that had the Alfheim and the Witch Chest. Coming up here is a part where you have to use Beast Within in order to uh, jump across. And I equip uh, both the both the handguns um, for an enemy that we're going to be fighting pretty shortly. So he even tells you, I wonder if I could reach it if I stay in human form. Well, you can't. You either have to, you know, turn into the Crow Within or to Beast Within in order to make it across here. And you'll see on a rail onto the side right here, there is a Crow that you need to catch. It'll try to fly away pretty quickly, so you're going to have to jump up and catch it. Now this verse, you have to fight against three harmonies. Nothing really too new. Like, if you need to, you know, uh... Like, you're probably going to have to do at least one torch attack against them to get a platinum. But something else you could do against harmonies if you, um... Find it a bit difficult to get a platinum for combo against them is, uh... Equip the, the Gaze of Despair. Like, the extra defense and uh, health that they get... Well, might just probably be enough for you to uh, get a high enough combo that you can actually finally achieve that uh, platinum rank for combo against them, so. You might not even have to go into Witch Time if you use the uh, Gaze of Despair. <laughs> but coming up are uh, two kind of strange enemies. Uh, right here, like I say, like I switched to um, having the shotguns on the feet. Oh crap, it's Fortitudo. Actually, no, it isn't. That is his facsimile, Fortitude. Yeah, it's just the English version of Fortitudo. Uh, the dragon heads will try to snap at you and dive at you. They'll try to shoot fireballs like they like he normally does. Most of the time, whenever he's trying to bite at you with his dragon heads, like if you're anywhere near him and you're touching him, you will get hit. So I kind of tend to prefer to keep my distance from him. But like, all of his attacks can give you witch time, so... Uh, this guy shouldn't be too big. Just keep your distance, because I find staying close to him is a bit dangerous. It's a, It feels like he hits you too easily if you stay close, so... And this is Temperance. Not Temperantia, Temperance. This is his facsimile. He is nowhere near as powerful. So, like before, like this giant punch he tries to do will give you witch time, and you can beat up on that pretty easily. And from there, I like to use Scarborough Fair to shoot at his head. He will try to come down here, and as you can see, he's dazed. He'll do that if you beat up his head enough. But sometimes he will come down and, like, um, use his eye lasers, which he's going to do right here, like you did in the normal boss fight. One of the attacks that I don't have happen in this video is he uses his head laser, you know, the jewel on top of his face. He will either swing that laser uh, sideways, like, across um, the platform or straight up and down. Uh, you cannot get Witch Time from that, so um, all you have to do is just avoid it. It can be kind of tricky, but it's nothing too big, and I didn't feel like it was really worth it to, you know, re-record the fight just to show it off. Like, you're going to see it happening. It's either going to be up or down, or it's going to be left or right. You're going to dodge it, and you're not going to get Witch Time. That's all there is to it. Holy crap. Well, yeah, as... Um the descriptions just said, you're going to have to jump onto this uh, platform with expert timing in order to get onto this little uh, tiny church area, sort of. But yeah, that big sort of weird tentacle thing, and plus all those tentacles we saw at the beginning of the chapter, uh, just like Fortitudo and Temperantia before, those are all, you know, how they you kind of like showed themselves before you actually fought them. That, we're going to be fighting uh, that guy next chapter. In this room, all you have to fight are three enchants. Uh, they're going to try and shoot fireballs at you, like, uh, when you walk in. So, And their fireballs are very, very quick, so you're going to have to dodge them. But once you do, it's so easy to get a pure platinum against them because um, the rankings are pretty easy. It's a room that once you know that they're there, they're not that difficult. Unlike the upcoming part, the yep, pulley's butterfly, that you know what's coming up, people. We are going to have to fight... Uh, Three kinship here, so 
three of them, yeah. Technically, the fight is optional, and you can just run away down the platforms, but hey, I'm going for a platinum rank. For some reason, it seems easier to get Witch Time against their missiles in this verse than it was in the previous chapter. But, in any case, like, um, Pulley's Butterfly is pretty much always what I use against them now. And, like, um, yeah, shit like that can happen to you. If you, like, jump and have to dodge, and you're forced to dodge at the wrong time, you will lose your footing, you will fall off, and you will take damage. I don't like fighting these guys right here. I was really, really lucky when I was doing this recording because none of these kinship use their mouth lasers. Like, you see right beneath, like, the face, there's that hole. Similar to, you know, Temperantia, they'll do, like, a face laser. And most of the time when they fire it, they'll fire it on places where, like, say, all your footing is on the backs of the other kinships. So, I don't know... I don't know if it was just, like, say, God smiling on me or something, but... These guys were remarkably tame when I was doing this recording, so... Just, as you saw, my opinion, use Pulley's Butterfly. It'll protect you against things that are just... will just, you know, blindside you coming from off-screen. It'll help you against the, uh... the salvo of missiles that you're gonna try to dodge, but you may not always be able to, so... The reason why you want to kill the three of those kinships is to reach this platform here with the Broken Moon Pearl. And then as you can see over there, use the Beast Within the jump uh, all the way. Then you have to tap the uh, dodge button really quickly to turn into the Crow Within. And you'll get to this platform, which has another Broken Witch Heart piece. Now, we can leave. Like, you see that a platform down there with those uh, floating little Halo platforms, like I mentioned in the previous chapter? Uh, those are there ever ever since you land, so you can run away from the kinship if you want. But doing so will make it so that you can't get that uh, those two chests. Now, don't be don't be afraid of these statues. Like, here's a funny story about this. Um, uh, Hideki Kamiya, the director, said in this verse, statues are put in places of where they originally wanted enemies to be, but they didn't have the ram to do it. On this bridge, you're going to have to dodge uh, the next boss's tentacles, and right up here is where you get the second crow of this chapter. And again, see, like, this statue right here? Nothing in there except an arcade bullet. However, the the upcoming statues are going to have an interesting enemy. Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, I use Kolshedra, and I'll tell you this story. They're called Gracious and Glorious. They are just harder, better, faster, stronger versions of Grace and Glory, except you can't get Witch Time from any of their attacks. So what do I do? I like to use the Moon of Mahakala, and I try to get a counter against them. And then from there, I like to try and uh, lasso one of them, and I try to destroy the dark red one, which is the Glorious, that's the fire one. And I do the exact same thing as I do to Grace and Glory, and that is, I pick up... Uh, I pick up the uh, angel arm, and I try to, you know, use a kick attack, and I try to destroy the, the gracious. Uh, this guy didn't really give me a chance to do that, so I got had to try and get off a torture attack against him, which only did so much. I didn't even see where the uh, angel arm was, so I end up uh, taking one hit. And I got a counter on him again, but I also kind of lost the combo, so... One of the reasons why I don't like this fight is, right after you finish this... A cutscene's gonna play, and you can't see your ranking until this cutscene ends. So, I don't like that fight, but I'll shut up for a moment. What happened to Mummy? Well, you see, she just went to look for something, that's all. I can't believe that witch, placing a poor helpless child under her spell. If she did anything to this little girl's parents, I swear. Always tripping in Japanese anime stories, aren't they? Mommy! No, no need to cry. We'll get you to your mom in no time. Uh, here, I've got some candy if you want. Just don't follow him into his truck if he offers you. Mmm. What is this? It's yummy. 
I don't know. It's candy. Strawberry, I think? Hey, Kitty, I've got some yummies. Would you like some? Is that cat your friend? Yes, he is. His name is Cheshire. He's cute, isn't he? Cheshire. What a stupid name. Well, so much for taking the highway. That just means we're gonna have to find something else. <laughs> now, all I have to figure out is what to do about you. So, Cerecita, that woman's really your mom? Uh-huh. My mummy is strong, and she protects me from scary monsters. Monsters? <laughs> I don't think you know who the real monsters are. Huh? And now, we get to see our ranking. Oh, actually, I did get a Platinum for combo. I was actually surprised. Yeah, I take, um... I was, like, uh... I missed out trying to find the, uh, glorious, um... Like, uh, Angel Arms there, but I was able to take them with me. And here, like in a previous chapter, we go through the same exact hallway of spikes. Again, you could use this to build up your magic if you need to. Actually, technically, an Alfheim is available now, but there is something else you could do before that. Coming up to this wall is the Gates of Hell, and right behind it is a breakable wall, and that'll reveal a hidden verse and a, uh, witch, um, chest. Like before, I entered the gates of hell in order to create a checkpoint, because the upcoming fight is a fight with another pair of gracious and glorious. So right here, I think, like, how I want to break them open, because once you break them open, they're gonna, you know, come to life. So right here, I just drop the, uh, uh witch arms. I run back and I pick them up. Now I charge up the attack. Doing so kind of allows me to avoid the uh, lightning shockwave, and I was able to just decimate one of them. Now you have to be careful against these guys. Like I mentioned, um, you can't get witch. T you cannot get witch time from any of their attacks. Um, the evil harvest rosary could be your good friend here, because if you dodge decently instead of witch time, you could at least do some damage against them and at least keep a combo going. Like, um. They also seem to like to dodge um, Wicked Weave attacks, even Tetsankos and Heal Stumps pretty pretty well. But I tend to find um, the rockets from Kilgore tend to do a good enough job stunning them that you can hit them with a Wicked Weave right afterwards. But yeah, I I do recommend uh, getting used to the Moon of Mahakala and trying to get uh, counters against them, because that will get you Witch Time and a good amount of it. Their attacks are strong, so I recommend getting some practice with that accessory. And for beating them, like right behind the is the next Witch Heart, and there we got yet another life extension. Now, in order to go to the uh, Alfheim, we gotta backtrack all the way to the point where we saw those um, Fairness and Fearless statues when we first landed here. And I don't care about that damage because I'm not in the middle of a verse, so I'm not gonna so I'm not gonna be counted against any ranking. Uh, the part where you have to avoid these tentacles, um, I've seen some people kind of, like, say, run and, you know, jump over it so that the swinging tentacles never hit them and that the, uh, bashing tentacles never fall on them. But most of the time when you have to move past them, you're not in a verse, and I don't find it's too difficult to avoid them. I mean, yeah, I say that as I got hit, but like I said, you're not in a verse, you're not going to get graded on it, so unless you're really low on health, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't really worry too much about it. But yeah, for this, um, for this Solfheim, you gotta use a bunch of angel arms around here. Now, actually, for the, for the beginning part, I actually would recommend using the Gaze of Despair, because that'll make all these decorations, like, fly to you a bit quicker, so that you don't have to waste time trying to, you know, like, trying to get them to all cluster together so that you could use the, uh, angel arms against them. But after you defeat, uh, those clusters... You're gonna have to fight Grace and Glory. So I go after Grace first with the, uh... With this, uh, bow weapon here. And I use a kick, the kick attack in order to, um, get the shots off. 
here against this uh, fairness, I just go into Witch Time and I use the uh, Grace uh, Angel Arm, just like I do against uh, Glory, and I just wreck him up within Witch Time. A fully charged, you know, like a spin attack with a kick button, that'll get you exactly what you need. If you just tap the button instead of holding it down, you might not kill him enough. But yeah, that's all you need to do for the Alfheim for this chapter. They're both pretty simple when you know how to do. Don't really require too great amounts of skill if you ask me, so. But yeah, we're really racking up the uh, stuff these past two chapters, aren't they? A lot of goodies to pick up. And with that, the, uh, the, ver the uh, chapter is almost done. And same as before, gotta run past this bridge again. So it's random whether or not one of the tentacles is either gonna sweep across the platform or try to bash it down on top of you, so. I think some people like flying over the tentacle bridge a bit better. Like I said, again, I really didn't care. I didn't even care about getting get hit by the spikes again, so. Like, unless you're going for the no damage bonus at the end of the ranking, which gets you a little bit extra money, during which, you know, damage outside of versus does count, eh, it's nothing to worry about. Now, once you're down here, you're gonna have to fight uh, three beloveds. Why are they all yellow, you ask? That is a good question, isn't it? But in any case, I'm gonna kill this one pretty quickly. And when you kill one... Yeah, what's all that yellow water? Oh, well, wait, don't worry, it's not what you think. Um, the corner of the director, these angels are supposed to be made of holy water. Holy water. Okay, whatever. So after you, like, say, destroy one of them, uh, another beloved will appear. On normal difficulty, you only have to fight three down here. On the harder difficulties, you have to fight some more. But yeah, there's nothing really special about them, except every time you kill one of them, this little pool keeps, um, getting larger. If you want to use these witch statues here to get, um, a longer amount of witch time against, to use against the beloveds you can, uh, this one isn't broken, so you don't have to worry about, you know, like, killing anything before you can. And then after you defeat the, the beloveds, just two inspireds appear made of the same holy water. Like, I hold down the lock-up button so that the second the Inspired comes into range, I can shoot him down. And yeah, now that we have Kill Kilgore, basic, a single uh, punch-kick-punch combo that, you know, fires a rocket from Kilgore, and followed by a Wicked Wee from Shiraba, is enough to kill those things, so... Yeah, they're pretty easy to defeat, just, you know, knock them out of the sky just by shooting them. And that's the last fight of the chapter, there's no boss this time. Uh, but that's going to be rectified next chapter because next chapter we are going to fight another one of the uh, four cardinals. So, just use witch time to climb up to this platform and you'll be done. <laughs> I guess I would say, you'll want to defeat all the Alfheim stuff before you jump down to fight the Beloveds because once you jump down to that area, you can't jump back out of it in, or in order to backtrack. So, before you jump down there, be sure you've done everything that you want to. And hey, look at that, I almost pure platinum this chapter. If I had just done a bit better against the, uh, two gracious and glorious fights, I would have, <laughs> yeah, I would have gone to pure platinum here, so that's pretty surprising. Like, there are a couple different other, like, say, strategies against gracious and glorious, if, I would say, like, later in the LP, like, maybe after the main story's done, I'll talk about, like, say, different strategies for the, uh, harder difficulties. But until then, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play Bayonetta.